How to build a black gauge sweet pea 5 inch gauge locomotive part 32. Drilling the smoke box saddle mounting holes so that they better align with the chassis holes. I then enlarge them to 1 8 of an inch for larger size bolts. Followed by drilling the long hole in the blast pipe. On screen at the moment is an excellent Proxon Micromot right angle drill. It's really useful for getting into positions where other drills cannot. Here I'm running a drill through the chassis holes to make sure that they perfectly align with the smoke box saddle. First of all I did one side, then I turned the engine round and did the other side. Then I repeated the process using a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill. This should allow me to use 5 BA bolts which are going to be about right for the scale and the strength required to support the smoke box. Here I'm drilling the other side with the smoke box saddle removed so you can see clearly what I've been doing. I drilled the holes in the smoke box saddle separately using the same drill later on. And now everything aligns perfectly, it couldn't be better. The next thing to do is make the blast pipe. I've already turned the external diameter of a piece of bar and threaded the end half inch by 26 threads per inch. I showed that in the previous episode. Now it's time to drill a hole in the middle. What diameter hole am I drilling here? Well, it's one imperial size under 3 eighths of an inch. I felt that this would give a stronger blast pipe because it screws into the T-piece and will be threaded at the other end to take the blast nozzle. I'll show the making of the blast nozzle in the next episode. Some lubricant is necessary for this job. If I don't use it, everything's going to get too hot. I don't think a drill bit of this size would snap off, but that's not the point. Using cutting lubricant makes a job far easier. As you can see from this clip, I am withdrawing the drill bit frequently to clear the chips. From a model engineering point of view, this drill bit is removing quite a lot of material. But the best thing about using a cutting lubricant is I don't have to apply quite so much pressure to the drill bit to push it through the work. This is quite an easy job. And once again, if you're doing a job like this, withdraw the drill bit frequently. That's because when most of the drill bit flutes are in the hole, they fill up with swarf very quickly. When I machined this piece of phosphor bronze, I really had no idea how long it needed to be because I hadn't looked in the book. As it turns out, it only needs to be five and three quarters of an inch long, including the threads at each end. But I didn't know this at the time, so I took no chances and I made it longer than it needs to be. Here I'm parting it off using the very thin parting tool and I've decreased the speed by running the lathe in back gear. This parting tool is the best one that I've got because it's so thin it doesn't put quite as much pressure on the work. And it's ideal for cutting grooves for not only piston rings but O-rings. In no time at all, the piece that I need parts company with the main bar stock in the chuck. Now I've turned the piece that I parted off around in the chuck and I'm doing exactly the same at the other end. Looking at this clip though, I should have tightened the tailstock chuck a little bit more. But never mind, I did get there in the end. And now it's top tip time. This is a very useful tip and it's not always obvious. When drilling long pieces of metal in the lathe, even if your drill bit is long enough to go all the way through, don't do it that way. Stop it, reverse the part in the chuck, and then drill in again from the other end. That way, any errors and discrepancies are in the middle of the tube, because the last thing you want to happen is the drill to break out at the other end and be off center. I once did a commercial job for a friend of mine. I had to drill 1,000 steel metal collars. The diameter of the bar was half an inch. He supplied all the bar stock and the holes needed to be 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter. Unfortunately though, to my horror, I soon realized after drilling holes one and a half inches deep or just over and parting them off that the drill was starting to wander on the third piece. And also, I had to sharpen the twist drill frequently, 
It was a terrible job and drove me mad. But it wasn't all wasted. That's what taught me that when you're drilling long holes in pieces of metal, go in from either end. Try not to go all the way through in one. With this blast pipe, the drill bit is only just long enough to do the job. It would have been a better idea to look at the drawing because if the part was five and three quarters of an inch long, the job would have been much quicker. Nearly there now, I turned the part around in the chuck one more time because I didn't go in quite enough at this end. As you can see, there's a bit of drill bit left. But thankfully, very shortly after I filmed this part of the clip, the drill broke through in the middle of the blast pipe and everything was fine. As you can see, in it goes. I now have a piece of phosphor bronze tube that's about nine inches long. Back on the workbench, the first thing I'm doing is blowing through the pipe with a compressed airline to get rid of any chippings. And here I'm screwing the blast pipe into the T piece. It screws all the way in, the thread is firm, and everything's good. Now I'm placing the smoke box and the smoke box saddle over the T piece to see where it ends up. I bought some pieces of sheet metal from Blackgate's engineering the other week but I got the top piece a bit wet when I was doing a boiler test. So here I'm just using my orbital sander to clean up the piece and here's where it fits, right at the front. According to the book, it does need a bracket to fasten this to the smoke box saddle at the front. You'll see me doing this in a later episode. I'm quite pleased with the way this job's worked out. The blast pipe, even though it's too long, is right in the centre of the chimney. This is very important. If it's off-centre, then the drafting's not going to be right. More about this in a future episode. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.